Hey everyone, it's time for a discussion about green screen. Now, I want to let you know that I'm doing this completely without a script, but I wanted to give you a chunk of video to go with my discussion about preparing the green screen. Now, it turns out that a green screen requires a bunch of different steps. It requires having the green screen, which I'm going to talk about how I created mine through paint. But you can also make one by hanging a cloth, if you hang a cloth that you keep nice and straight or even a piece of paper behind certain things, and there's all sorts of techniques you can do. But for, for the Skype studio, I just painted a green screen on the wall. Um, and, and there's other parts that relate to it too, which involves lighting, for example, where you place the lights, how you place the lights, and, and a piece of software called Chroma King, which deals with basically how you get the um, drywall behind me instead of, you know, for example, uh, let's say a spinning globe. So that's, that's all different pieces of the puzzle. Now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few green screen examples so that you can just get a rough idea of what you can do with this toy. And later on what I'll do in, in future articles is I'll take you through in particular how lighting is done and secondarily how um, the chroma key stuff is done because that's all part of another piece of software. It's actually part of a piece of software called Boinks TV which is really quite exceptional. Uh, also I'm talking to you now uh, the actual first maiden voyage of the entire studio is occurring in a couple of days. So we haven't actually produced a full program off of this thing yet. So it's still experimental. I think it works, but, you know, we're going to find that out in a couple of days. We've got two very interesting interviews that I'll be doing using all the aspects of the, spy, the, the, the um, Skype studio together. And hopefully that'll give us some cool stuff. So you've been looking at a rotating globe. I'm going to just, you're going to see me turning away because I'm actually controlling this stuff as I'm talking to you. So let's turn off the spinning globe and let's do, say, a conference room background or a row of servers or just a simple gray wall. Um, the opportunity is, is, is really interesting because you can play with a lot of di different kinds of things. Here's, here is a ZDNet logo. Of course, my head's in the way, but you can see that there's a ZDNet logo and if I wanted to do some identification for my ZDNet government blog, there's a lower thirds. Now this lower thirds is one single Photoshop graphics, the graphic. The actual production studio um, generates the lower thirds dynamically as I put the stuff together, which is kind of interesting and hopefully will actually work. So let me get rid of that and uh, let's switch this up a little bit. Let's see if I can uh, pull this in place. And so I'm gonna throw a webcast image up. These are some of the webcasts that I've done. And one of the neat things that you can do with this is you can, for example, make yourself smaller and let's see if I get this right. Okay, you see my hand is cut off a little bit. But, you know, if I set up the studio properly, I could point upwards, there we go, and point to the title, or I could change up the slide. You know, and you're seeing a flash because I didn't turn off the, the lower, um, uh, the other stuff in the background. I'm going to turn that off and see if I can switch slides a little more smoothly. So there's another slide. And this actually has a duration delay of a dissolve. Um, so I'm going to actually come up here and try to get rid of that. So when I switch to this current one, it should just go. There you go. See, as you can see, it, it switches in. So there's a lot of things that I'm able to do. I can even do things like, you know, run two feeds. So there's the little feed sort of up behind that you can kind of see, Let's, if I move over you can kind of see my head peeking out over my shoulder back there. Um, but I'm going to turn that off because it looks kind of silly and uh, let's see if I can move that around a little bit. Hang on a sec. Let's see if I can move the Y. There we go. Hello. There's me. There's two of me. One talking to the other. So as you can see you can do, do some stuff with green screen. I mean I wouldn't do that because it's a little silly. Um, you know, I would rather just bring it back to, you know, something simple like, um, you know, I keep seeming to return to my drywall because this is DIY IT, but that gives you a rough idea of what you can do with a green screen. Now, the article uh, at DIY IT on ZDNet is going to talk to you about the kind of paint used and the prep work used, and then I'm going to have another article that's entirely about how to cover up the those wall sockets that were in the green screen that got in the way of the green screen. But for now, that should be enough to keep us busy, and uh, I'll see you with the next piece of this as we move on. And hopefully, by the time I do more on the Skype Studio, you'll actually have some examples of full running programs with really interesting interviews. I've got one scheduled 
uh, with some scientists from Oregon National Laboratories about voting machine, uh, potential voting machine frauds and hacking voting machines and so forth. That should be absolutely fascinating. So stay tuned to that stuff, or if you're watching this in a couple months, um, just go look at, at David Gore's TV on, on YouTube or DIY IT or um, the ZDNet government blog, and you should be able to find this stuff. Or just do a search on Google and you'll find it. Anyway, thanks a lot, and I will talk to you soon. Turn this off. Bye.